I got an important update. I wanted to get this out there to you guys right away. I shot a video on December 13th about how to reduce blood sugar of a diabetic. And that was exactly on December 13th. Today is December 22nd, 2016. As I shoot this video, I'm going to go out for a while for a little walk right now. So when I shot the video, my friend Mike was dealing with high blood sugar. His blood sugar was 519, which is incredibly high and very dangerous. And it could kill someone. You could definitely start going blind and uh, you know, have some serious you know, health problems with this high blood sugar. So he had been going to the doctor. The doctor was telling him, hey, you know, take medication, exercise more, eat better. He'd been doing these things, taking his pills, Doing what the doctor tells him to do, nothing was working. Now his blood sugar is down to 95. Now that is nine days ago, nine days ago that he followed exactly what I told him to do, nine days ago, all right? So let me break down exactly what I told him to do in, 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 in his situation. This information is not gonna hit home with, with, with someone until they've hit a wall where they've tried everything and nothing worked. All right, so I just wanna let you know, that's where he was at. Now, if it was a year ago, and his blood sugar was like a little bit high, but not too high, you know, and I would have told him this information, he probably wouldn't have taken it seriously. He wouldn't have done it. He would probably just went back to his doctor and listened to the doctor. But because he'd been doing what his doctor said to do, which is eat healthier and, and exercise, and take these pills, nothing had worked. So he'd really hit a wall. Mike was having orange juice and, and chocolate milk in the morning. And he was actually doing really well and not eating till usually around like 11 o'clock. He'd stop eating around six o'clock and he would start eating again like 11 o'clock or so, his lunch, breakfast. He didn't really have like a big breakfast, but he'd always have orange juice and chocolate milk. Who would have thought it was such a big deal? Just orange juice, man. Just some chocolate milk. It's like, come on, dude, really? Like, it's not a big deal. It's not, but what I told him is I said, Mike, I understand that you probably love orange juice. Save that orange juice, just save it till the afternoon. Save it, okay, I don't want you to, I just want you to leave the orange juice alone, leave the chocolate milk alone, save it till the afternoon. Have black coffee, okay? Have the black coffee, have water, and have sparkling water, and he actually drank tea. I said, no sugar with the tea. You can have stevia, but no sugar. You can have zero sugar with the tea. So he just drank regular tea. By doing this, okay, he waited 18 hours each day. He stopped eating at six and he started eating again at 12, noon. It was hard at first, but by doing this over the last just nine days now, his blood sugar is now down to 95. So from 519, to now 95, which is normal. So now he's got normal blood sugar for the first time in years, just by following this simple strategy. So there's hope out there's hope. There's a lot of hope. So there's hope out there for someone who has high blood sugar if they're willing to just receive this simple, basic information. So watch the video that I talked a little bit further in detail about it here. You can find out more of the information on how it all worked. You really gotta get out and walk. It's a nice day, it's a beautiful day. You know, it's, it's you know, in California in the middle of winter time and it's in the low, feels like it's in the low 60s. Hope you're saying hi to me. Hey Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas, boy. Go out and make it a great day. One thing about dogs I learned from a dog trainer is if the dogs, I'm always scared of dogs, you know, growing up. I was always scared of dogs. You know, we had a pet dog and the dog, I was allergic to dogs. So, you know, the dogs would make me sneeze and then they would make my eyes water and I would get asthma. Couldn't breathe, so, you know, choking on my breath around the dogs. So I was scared of the dogs because when they came around me, I wanted to pet the dog and then he would, I, I would start getting really bad asthma. And then so this, because I never wanted to be around the dog because of that, we had a pet dog and I never gave him any love because I, I didn't want to, he gave me asthma when I was around him. So he would, he would use my bedroom as a freaking toilet. I, <laughs> he would use my bedroom as his toilet and I'd be at school 
and he would he would use my bedroom as his toilet like his litter box and I hated that dog for that <laughs> the reason I tell you this is around dogs like if, if, if you're ever scared of dogs I'm not scared of them anymore but when I was a kid I definitely was you know uh, f facing away from the dog if the dog's like behind you not looking at the dog paying him no attention looking away from the dog completely turning your back always turn your back on the dog if it's a stray dog so he doesn't see you if you start looking him in the eyes he may try you think you're challenging him same thing goes for like you know street gangbangers you know I'm, I'm walking through Broderick right now you know it's like I don't need to look him right in the eye I'm just gonna walk on my way I don't need to cause any trouble yeah the dog the dog's name was Shaggy the dog Shaggy the dog is a Lhasa officer and he had these there's underbite like this his teeth would go like underbiting like this he wasn't a mean mean dog but he didn't like me because I I, I can't say why he didn't like me he hated me of course I hated him because he, he was using my bedroom as his toilet <laughs>